the name of the Lord. Everybody say, the Lord is good. good. Say, his mercy endures forever. Are you guys ready for some word tonight? You ready for some word tonight? Let's just pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the Holy Spirit. We thank you, Lord God, that he's in us. He's among us. He's our teacher. He leads and guides us into all truth. We thank you for ears to hear, eyes to see, a heart to understand. We thank you for revelation, impartation, Lord God. We thank you that our minds will be renewed, our lives will be transformed. And Lord, I just thank you, Lord Father, that it's by your grace I can be an oracle to speak forth your word, Father, that you give me utterance in the Holy Spirit. But also, Father, we thank you for the confirmation of the word. We thank you for signs following the preaching of the word. We thank you for miracles that take place in this room, those that are watching, those that are going to watch, Father God. We thank you, Father God, that you're the same yesterday, today, and forever. And we expect your word to manifest as you said and you declared in it. And we give you all the glory, all the praise, all the honor. In Jesus' name, and all God's people said, Amen. 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 Let's open our Bibles to the book of 2 Samuel the uh, third chapter, and we're talking about a life built on the Word. Everybody say, a life built on the Word. And we said this, is that when you are a doer of the Word, what happens? Your house stands, right? By the grace of the Lord. And last week we started talking about faith fight, or fight of faith, and how many know there is a fight to faith? The Bible says, uh, fight the good fight of faith. When you and I get into faith, uh, that's when the battle I mean, start, it's all over, to be honest with you. The devil's trying not to get you into faith. How many know that, right? He'll try to keep you from church, try to keep you from hearing a good sermon. He'll try to distract you, right? That's the devil. And then if the word gets inside you, uh, he immediately comes to try to take that word out of you because he knows the power of the word. The word will change your life. That word will grow. That word will produce. So it's, it's, it's a, in hell, when the word is being preached, and the word gets into somebody's heart, it is like a five-star hell's bells. It is an all-out attack trying to get that. Because he knows if that word lay whole, it's going to work. And so there's a, there's a uh, uh, once you get the word, it, it's the fight of faith. What do you mean by the fight of faith? Until the word becomes a manifestation and a, a physical manifestation, there is a fight to your faith. There is a fight. Remember the story of Job in the book of Psalms that said, it said until, the book of, uh, about jo Joseph, it said until his word came, the word of the Lord tried him. What does that mean? Joseph got a word from God when he was young, a word about him being a leader, about him doing great things, and, and, uh, and, and, but it didn't happen right away. We know the story. Of what happened? It made, uh, he gets his brothers put him in a, 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 a cave or crypt there, a, a tomb, almost a tomb like, you know. They sell him. He's a slave. He's working in Potiphar's house. Then he's a prisoner. I mean, things just kept getting from bad to worse to worse to worse to worse to worse, right? And the word says, until the time that the word, the manifestation of that word came, the word of the Lord tried him. That word tried means like a fire. It is almost like when you're in a, uh, a crucible and it's, 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 it's purifying the gold. When the heat is on, the impurities come to the top and then they get scooped off the top. And, and this is what happens, church family. So when you lay hold to a promise of God, there is a fight of faith. There is a fight. We said to you last week, it said, if you faint in the day of adversary, not anniversary, a faint of adversity... <laughs> <laughs> your, 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 your strength is small. In other words, there is going to be adversity to your faith. You are in a faith fight, right? If you're believing for healing and you're in pain right now uh, and you're not seeing anything happen, you're in a faith fight. The word says you and I have to walk by faith. If you're believing God to pay your bills and you're like, Pastor, I don't know where it's going to come from. You are in a faith fight. You're standing on the word, right? And we thank God that your faith, by the grace of God, will become sight, but it doesn't happen overnight. There is a fight. And, and I humbly say that many people throw in, as we're going to see from the scriptures, they throw in the proverbial towel and they just quit. The children of Israel did that. The Bible says that they came short of the promised land. They fell short. Why? The word that they heard wasn't mixed with faith. They're right at the door. They could smell the, the, the produce on the other side and they didn't get in. Everybody say, by the grace of God, not me. Everybody say, step by step. Say, I'm not moved by what I see. I'm not moved by what I feel. I am moved by the word of the living God. 
And his word is working mightily in me in Jesus' name. Whether I feel it or not, whether I smell it or not, whether I see it or not, it's happening. That's what walking by faith is. You're walking by the word of God. Notice what it says here in 2 Samuel, the third chapter, verse number one. 2 Samuel, the third chapter, verse one. How many love the word? Amen. Glory to God. It says, now there was a long war between the house of Saul. Everybody say the house of Saul. And the house of David. But David waxed stronger. David got stronger and stronger. And the house of Saul wax weaker. Everybody say weaker. weaker. There was a long war. Everybody say a long war. long war. Now let me just, we're going to look at some of these words here, but I want you to see this slide here. And uh, just so that you can see it, look at slide number four. And I, I, it's kind of long, but I want you to see it. Slide four. It said David was, listen, David was about 13 when he was ordered to Saul's court and 15 when Goliath first taunted him, taunted Israel's army. He was probably about 10 or 11 when he was anointed by Samuel in Bethlehem. Okay, so that kind of gives you an idea of what was going on. So, so David, by the, when Samuel came to the house of Jesse and anointed David to be king, to be king over Israel, he was about 10 or 11 years old. Okay, he waited 20 years to start to reign. He started to reign in Jerusalem, or excuse me, in Judah. It, it, it took 20 years for that to happen. And it took over 27 and a half years for the full manifestation of God's word to him. So he reigned in Judah. It took 20 years for, for it to start to happen. But we know it was starting to happen the moment God spoke it. Right. right? We know it started to happen, right? The moment God spoke that prophetic word to him that he was going to be the king. He's an 11-year-old boy. How old is your son, Caleb? 13 years. Caleb's eight. Caleb's eight. So in between, is there any 11-year-olds here tonight <laughs> other than myself, right? Right? 13, eight, right? So he was like between 10 and 11, he, he, God spoke to him, gave him an, the anointing of God came on him, right? And, and so we know at that moment, the word of the Lord was starting to work, right? He waited 20 years to start ruling in Judah, right? And then another seven and a half years for him to start reigning over Israel, the other, 12, uh, other tribes, right? So the full manifestation of that word took 27 and a half years. That's a long time, yeah. right? That's a really long time. And, and, and notice too, when he was anointed here, can I get my stick? <laughs> when he was anointed there, when he was 10 years old, right? God spoke to him. He's 10 or 11 years old. And he, he gets called to uh, the court here when he's 13. To, Saul had a minister with the, with, the, with the harp. And then when he was 15 years old, he faced Goliath. So we're, we're seeing right here during these formative years right here, he gets the word and it kind of seems like good things are starting to happen. I mean, it seems pretty good. I mean, immediately he's getting summoned to call Saul's court. That's a positive thing. When you think the king says, hey, you're, you're a young 13 year old boy. You're anointed to play the harp. You're playing before the king. It's a great thing. So that's good. And, and then this whole thing you know, during that time, he's watching his father's sheep. Uh, he's, he's slaying lions, he's slaying bears, right? He, he's learning his, uh, the, the anointing, you know? God's teaching him how to flow in the anointing. And then when he's 15 years old, he's a young lad, he, uh, he's facing Goliath. This is huge, right? This is the, the turning point in David's life. You would think that this was the pinnacle, right? This is it, right? Which is huge. The, the word's going to happen right after this. He faces Goliath, chops off Goliath's head, and from that moment, from that spiritual high of him facing Goliath, it seemed like things got worse. I mean, immediately right after that happened, uh, they're going into the city and all the young girls are shouting and they're singing and they're saying, Saul has slain his thousands. But they go, but David, this little 15 year old kid, he's slain his, well, you know, his uh, 10 thousands or so, a lot more. And from that moment on, Saul becomes very jealous of David. And so from this point here, from 15 to 20 years old, it was all hell unleashed on David. 
I mean, Saul literally was chasing him with every military man that he had. We could term it like this. It was the Army, the Navy, the Marines, the Air Force, the Secret Service, the Homeland Security, everybody <laughs> out looking for this kid. He's hiding out in caves. Matter of fact, God brings people to him that are from Judah that want to be around him, and they're the discontented, they're the grumblers, they're people that are in debt. So like even his own people that God was bringing, he's like, Lord, couldn't you bring some mighty men to me? But how many of those men ended up being mighty men? Are you hearing me? So what are you saying, Pastor Michael? God gave him a word here. It seemed to kind of, like some of you here, it seems like it's moving in a positive direction here. But then all of a sudden, things start to get worse. And it seems like it's dry for many years. And so now, listen to this. He gets the kingdom here. Saul is dead. You would figure that would be over. End of scenario. All done. Saul's dead. He should be reigning over all the house of Israel. But as we're seeing here, go back to that scripture, my dear friend, is that we're seeing, verse number one, is that that point in time, it says from when, when David got uh, reigned over Judah, there was a long war between the house of Saul and the house of David. But notice this now. It says something. David got stronger. And the house of Saul got weaker. Now notice this. I want you to see some of these words here. It says there was a long war. Slide number two. How many love the word tonight? How many know that you are in a war? Yes. The word war here, there's the Hebrew word. It's a battle, a war. It means a sustained fight, a lengthy and difficult conflict or struggle. Now, most Christians do not want to hear about a battle, a war, a long sustained fight, difficult conflict or struggle. <laughs> we don't want to hear that. We don't want to hear that when you get in faith, the devil's going to come immediately to try to steal the word out of your heart. We don't want to hear this. We don't want to hear having done all to stand, stand. But I'm here to tell you, if you want the gold and you want God's perfect manifestation of his promise in your life, you and I, all of us, are going to have to stand and stand and having done all to stand, keep on standing. Because if we'll do this, look what it goes on to say. Go back to the scripture. How many love the word? We love the word, right? He says there was a long, this is it. He, 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 even though God gave him a word, it's a promise of God. There still was a fight to it. The house of David waxed stronger and stronger, and the house of Saul waxed weaker and weaker. Notice the word for stronger. Slide number three. How many love the word? He says the word, the word stronger means this. It means got stronger. How many like this? Got louder. Got more powerful. How many know that as we're in our battle, we thank God we need to be getting stronger, but also we need to be getting, as we're going to see other scriptures, we need to be getting more louder. We need to be verbalizing, loudly proclaiming our faith. We need to be decreeing the decree of the Lord loudly, yes. boldly. We need to be telling the world, uh, the angels of God, the demon forces, the devil, what God says. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Yes. Are you hearing me, church family? How many love the word of the Lord? Isn't it great? Everybody say getting stronger and stronger. I'm about to say stronger and stronger. stronger. Say stronger and stronger. stronger. Look at that scripture in the Amplified. I want you to see it. We just love it here. The Amplified says like this. Slide, uh, verse number one. And then we'll read the Message Bible. Hallelujah. Everybody say, I'm getting stronger. I'm getting stronger. He goes, there was a long war between the house of Saul and the house of David. But David grew stronger and stronger. Now notice this. This is what's happening in the spirit. As we're getting stronger and stronger, the house of Saul, the sickness, the poverty, the discouragement is getting weaker. Are you hearing me? But see, our mentality and our mindset is this. We want things to happen like this all at once. Sometimes that may happen. Most of the time, it does not. There is a walk to faith. 
The children of Israel, when they went into the promised land, they possessed it one step, one place, one foot at a time. And you and I have to get used to this trench warfare. Where, are you hearing me? Well, we're standing on the word and we're moving forward. You know, during those, uh, the wars, when they had like the, the trenches there, they, very, very minimal movement was made at, at times. But, they, but you know what? The, the guys that won were the ones that were the persistent ones, and they just kept taking ground. Right. Everybody say, by the grace of God, grace of God I'm, taking ground. I'm taking ground. Look at that in the Message Bible, my friend. How many love it? Isn't it great? Hallelujah. It says, the war between the house of Saul and the house of David. Does anybody... Beside me, ever felt that it's just dragging on, man. <laughs> I mean, have you ever been there? You're like, Lord, why isn't it happening quicker? Why does it feel like it's dragging on? The longer, but, but, guess, but here's the cool thing about it. The longer it went on, the stronger David became. Yeah. How many know that it's making you better and it's making you stronger? This is not wasted faith effort. You're going to come out on the other side a better, stronger, more powerful man and woman of God. How would you like that? David became, it says, stronger and the house of Saul. Everybody say getting weaker and weaker. Everybody say weaker and weaker. All righty, all righty. Let's move on. I want you to see this here. Let's go to the book of Hebrews, the sixth chapter, verse 12. Woo, we love it. Love the word. Everybody say, I'm not quitting. Just say it real loud. Say, I'm not quitting. I'm not quitting. Say, come what may, I'm standing. I'm going to continue to stand. I'm not, you know, we used to sing a song <laughs> when we, we were kids, you know. And, and maybe, how many of you remember that song? Uh, I shall not be, I shall not be moved. I shall not be, I shall not be moved. Just like a tree planted by the water. I shall not be be, so my dad, we'd be there, you know, and so th those that know my father will appreciate this. <laughs> we'd be sitting there, my dad, he used to get into it, you know, he'd be like, I shall not be, and he really thought he was Pavarazzi in some ways, but he just belted out strong, you know, I shall not be, I shall not be, and then, you know, and then, so then he, 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 he we, we were like, uh, we'd be in a, having a house Bible study. And there would be, you know, a few folks there. And they, so we're all singing, Pastor. And so he'd go, okay, Sandy. And you go, uh, and you go uh, uh, even in the bowling alley, I'll not be moved. <laughs> I shall. And so everybody's going around, even in the blizzard, I shall not be moved. And we're just, everybody's making up their own little riff, you know. We were rapping before it even was cool. I mean, we were just laying, laying, laying our tracks down. <laughs> but there's something to be said about that. I shall not be moved. I'm standing. I'm standing. I'm not going anywhere. You need to say that. You need to say that over your marriage. You need to say that over your kids. Hey, 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 devil, devil, I want you to know you might think, you might think you got some uh, thing going on here, but you're getting weaker and weaker, and we're getting stronger and stronger in Jesus' name, and I ain't going anywhere. Yes. Look what it says here. It says, he says, that you be not slothful, but followers of them, everybody say followers of them, followers. who through what? Faith and what? Patience. What do they do? The who are the ones that inherit the promises? Faith. It's not just the faith people. It's that patient bunch. <laughs> Nobody wants to hear this. I'm not getting any. Rahs. No, no, no. <laughs> it's not those, just the faith bunch. It's the, it's the patient bunch, too. It's both of them combined together. Yes. People that, notice this, I'm going to give you the word, the definition, then we'll give you a, a couple of different translations. He says, he said, don't be slothful, but followers of them who through faith and what? Patience. patience. You know, when your patience runs out, your faith runs out. Yes. Yeah. I quit. I'm done. I can't take it no more. You're done. Yeah. What are you doing? You're tapping out. Are you hearing me? Notice what the word patience is. I want you to see it. Slide number 11. How many are excited tonight? Is this feeding anybody besides me? Am I just preaching myself happy tonight? <laughs> I don't know about you. I'm happy. I'm happy. I, Caleb, I'm happy to see you, Caleb. Ain't it great to see Caleb here? God, I, I tell you what. I tell my wife. I was telling my son. before. I, I just appreciate you, precious people. Wednesday night. 
You know, especially those that pop up and got to be up. Brian, I know he gets up before the, the roosters, right, Brian? What time do you get up, Brian? Well, I don't get up until four and a late. Now four o'clock? <laughs> Going after four? <laughs> <laughs> and Jerry, I know you get up and pay Andy, you know, and I, and I, God sees this. This is precious and others here, you know, and you get, you that sleep till 12. God, God still loves you too, but I'm, I'm just, <laughs> but you people, I'm telling you, man, and, and you know, God sees it. It's precious, precious to the Lord. He goes, it's through faith and what patience they inherit. Part. This is what that word patience means. The word patience means endurance. Everybody say endurance. endurance. You know what endurance means is your endurance. How many know there's some ants you got to endure, right? Yeah. That's, I'm just goofing. But you know what I'm saying? Endurance. Being faithful. You're sticking it out. You're dependable. You're steadfast. You're persevering. You're sh but listen to this last one. I like this last one. Showing courage in pain or adversity. How many like that? Yeah. So not only are you showing endurance, but during that time you're showing courage. You're being faithful, but you're showing courage in the midst of the pain, in the midst of the adversity. Have you ever been there before? Yeah. We all, sometimes, sometimes you know, there, there is something to be said about the sacrifice of praise. Yes. Yes. You've ever been there? I, I, we all, we've all been there. Where you're just like, yeah, you don't want to praise, but boy, you know, you're just like, Lord. Oh. And you know, it's almost like your arms are heavy and you're just, and your heart, you ever just been there where your heart's just bleeding all over the place? Is anybody... Anybody had a, your heart just ripped right out of you? Yeah. And you're, you just, oh, and, and you, but you're just keeping on, keep, that's precious to the Lord. And you're showing courage. You're showing courage during that time. You're not quitting. That's precious. That's, that's a part, you're enduring. Everybody say enduring. enduring. Now look at that. I want you to see that in the Amplified. We'll just look at this. this is, these are great scriptures, guys. Let the word of the Lord minister to you. He goes, in order he goes, that you might not grow disinterested is it possible that Christians can become disinterested? Sure. Yeah. Oh, Pastor Michael, my goodness, I've heard every sermon he's done three times on Sunday and six times on Wednesday. I'm tired of it. Being disinterested, become a sluggard. You know, anybody know what a sluggard is? Yeah. All right. <laughs> but imitators, behaving as do those who through faith, by the leaning of their entire personality on God, in Christ, in absolute trust and confidence in his power, wisdom and goodness, and by practice of patience, how many of you, know you got to practice patience? Endurance and waiting. What are they experiencing, those people? They are now inheriting the promises. Everybody say, that be me. That be me. I'm going to be one of them that are going to inherit the promises. Yes. Right? Look at it says here. Look at, um, look at that scripture in the Message Bible. How many love it? It's great. Great. The Message says like this. Don't drag your feet. Be like those who stay the course with committed faith. And what happens to those people? They get everything promised to them. <laughs> how, many, how many can get excited about that? How many, get, how many are staying the course? Is it, is it possible the devil tries to get you off course, get you all goofy? No, no, no. Don't drag your feet. Be like those who stay the course with committed faith. And then, and then, and then. And then. Some people are wondering why. How come it's not happening? Well, it's patience, church. And then they get. Look at the verse number 15, guys. We are excited. Everybody says, I'm getting it all. And you know, when we come together like this, we are encouraging each other. Because yes. you know what, God, I believe God's speaking to the young people here, the, the, yes. the, uh, the younger people here, uh, the people, all you people, right? Yes. I mean, how many know God's speaking to his people? Yes. And you're get, dreams are coming, visions are coming, yes. right? He, he didn't give up. He said, young men will dream dreams. No, he said, oh, young men have visions, right? What's that? Was it visions? The old men will dream dreams. I think, right. I think he made it easier for the old men, right? So they're sleeping. He's going to talk to them. <laughs> And the young men will have visions, but I'm going to get both. And so if you're getting visions and dreams, you're a tweener, and um, it's all good. <laughs> now, this is speaking about Abraham here. It says, and so after he patiently endured, Abraham patiently endured, what, what did he get? He, got, he obtained it, right? But if he didn't patiently endure, as the word says, he wouldn't get the promise. Look, look at that scripture in the Message Bible. I want, this is great here. I like this. This is one of my favorite. It said, Abraham... Stuck it out. 
<laughs> Abraham stuck it out. How many stuck it out people we got in the room here tonight? <laughs> <laughs> and what, what did he get? And he got everything that had been promised to him. Yes. Why? He stuck it out. He didn't, David got everything he promised to him. Why? He stuck it out. He didn't quit. He's the one, that, he said in the Psalms, he said, I would have fainted unless I believed to see the goodness of God in the land of the living. Yes. I mean, how I many of you got to stuck it out? I mean, lay, lay hold of that promise. Don't give up, guys. Don't give up. Just lay hold to it. Everybody say, I'm not quitting. I'm not All right. Look at Hebrews, the 10th chapter. Oh, we getting it tonight. Man, we're getting it tonight. I'm, I, nothing's hard for God. I just think people just quit. And then they go, well, we've got to start a new denomination. The quitters. <laughs> First church of the quitters. <laughs> People go, well, how come there's no manifestation? How come it's not happening? Well, uh, can't be my fault. Uh, it's got to be God's fault. So we're going to be the church of no manifestation. No. Is it possible we're just quitting? Is it possible we're just throwing in the towel? Yeah. But everybody say, not me by the grace of God. Oh, I ain't quitting. I'm not quitting. Look at what it says here. Hebrews, the 10th chapter, verse 32. Woo. But he's, he's, he's trying to encourage these believers not to quit. This whole big part of the book of Hebrews is, is Jesus is better. It's better. The new covenant is better. We have a better high priest. And, he, and then he, the, the, the 11th chapter is all about faith. He goes on from here. goes into the 11th chapter. It's all encouraging these people. This is the wonderful book. It says, don't forsake the assembling of yourself together. But he says, well, come provoke one another to love and good works. He's, this is the, it's all about encouragement. This, this is a great book. But one of the things that they're having problem was their, their faith was wavering. They're, they're wanting to quit. We saw that in the sixth chapter, and we're seeing it again in the tenth chapter. He says, he says, he says, call to remembrance the former days. He says, listen, guys, think back in which after you were illuminated, you endured a great fight of afflictions. Let's look at that in the New Living Translation, Jeremy. He's, he's reminding them when you first got enlightened, you know, it's amazing when people just get the word and it's fresh. They're like, they're, they're like, they're like, uh, they're like ninjas in the spirit, man. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're all like, yeah, 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 devil. You know, how many know you got to keep it on, keep it on, right? He says, don't ever forget those early days when you first learned about Christ. Remember how you remained faithful, even though it meant terrible sufferings. So in other words, they were, they, they were illuminated. They heard about Christ. Their, their eyes were opened up and they got the word in them. And man, they're going through it. But they were remaining faithful. They weren't quitting. Now let's go to the next verse, verse 33. He says, partly whilst you were made a gazing stock by, by reproaches, there, there are people are you know, reproaching them, afflictions, um, while you were made, became companions. In other words, it was just a mess. He said, people were people attacking you, re reproaching you, afflictions. Look at verse 34, guys. He goes, for you had compassion of me and my bonds. You took joyfully the spoiling of your goods, knowing in yourself that you had in heaven a better and, and an enduring. In other words, their, their whole priorities were right. They're like, they're thinking about Paul in prisons. They're like, hey, they're, 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 they're giving. They're just, they're not shutting down. They're still open to the Lord because they know they got a better reward in heaven. Look at verse 35, guys. What does he tell them to do? He said, cast not, therefore you're what? Which hath what? Of what? what? What's he telling them to do? He says, if you want the reward, this is what you got to not do. Don't cast away, don't fling your confidence away. Now notice what this word confidence is. I want you to see it, my dear friend. Slide number 12. Because this is what they're doing. They're quitting. And so it, the battle was on. They're getting discouraged. There's afflictions. There are reproaches. They're suffering. The words, they're not seeing the manifestation of the word like they want to see it. It's not happening quick enough. He said, don't throw away your confidence. What was their confidence? What was he saying? Confidence is cheerful courage. Don't throw away your courage. You're free and fearless. In other words, be, be free, be fearless. Don't, don't, get, don't hold back. Don't become shy. He said, don't, don't throw away your boldness in speech. How are you doing today? Well, I don't know. He's you doing okay? Even if you don't say anything, it's like, we know what you're thinking. Life sucks, doesn't it? 
<laughs> right? Why don't you just, what you need to do during that time, fake it. It's called faith. Not fake faith, but there's something about just going, I'm blessed. How, how you doing today? No. He says, don't throw away your boldness in speaking. Your, your, out, your frank, bold, blunt, speaking bluntly, boldly. Speaking without concealment. You're not hiding it. You're not hiding your faith or preventing it from being known. You're saying, I'm going to let it be known. Don't cast away your boldness of faith. Don't, don't cast away what you were believing in the beginning. This word also means that, you're, that you, were with, you weren't open to more than one interpretation or an exact. In other words, when you were believing God, you were standing for exactly what the word would, would say, was saying to you. You weren't open to any other interpretation. In other words, you weren't, it's not like you're misinterpreting the word. God, you're saying, by his stripes I'm healed. I'm claiming that. And you're, and you're not opening yourself up to another interpretation of the word. Right? So what is he saying? He says, don't cast away that. Don't cast away your boldness, your courage, your speaking, your confidence. <laughs> right? Just be bold about it. Now, I declare the decree of the Lord. I am blessed. I, I, you know, whatever God's speaking to your hearts, be bold. Speak it out. Don't cast away your confidence. Look at that scripture. I want you to see it. Slide number, let's say, 35. Let's see, Jeremy, go to the New Living Translation. No, no, wait, before you do. Yeah, do the New Living, and then we'll look at this other here. How many love the word? Ain't great? Yes. See, during those times, this is what the devil tried to do, try to get you like this. And you've got to, by faith, start de de boldly say it from your mouth. Look at yourself in the mirror and go, you're a blessed man. You're an anointed woman. You know, I'm prosperous. I'm the healed of the Lord. You're like, Pastor, I don't feel like saying that. No, you need to say it loudly, yes. clearly. Yes. Remember David, the house of David got stronger and the house of Saul got weaker. The, the definition for that stronger meant more, meant stronger, powerful, but it also meant louder. Yes. Be louder. Yes. Begin to decree it. I'm blessed. That'll, that'll, chase the that'll chase the blues away real quick. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad. I am blessed. I'm anointed. I'm called of God. Look at the New Living. It says this. Do not throw away this confident trust in the Lord no matter what happens. Remember the great reward it brings you. Well, reverse that. If you throw away your confidence because of the what that happens, guess what? There's no great reward. Some of you say, well, no, we're under grace, Pastor Michael. You know, God just blesses everybody the same. No, I'm, I've been a Christian a long time. I mean, there's some folks who are way more blessed than I am, and there's some folks that are way less blessed than I am. It's just <laughs> I'm extremely blessed. I have, I have to say that. I am extremely blessed. And I'm going to get more blessed too, right? How many are confessing that for themselves? He says, he says, don't throw away this confident trust in the Lord no matter what happens, no matter what, what, what does that mean? You don't know what's going to happen. Has anybody been there besides me? You're like, dog, I started getting in faith and holy Moses, what's going on there? <laughs> yeah. Remember Jesus said, let's go to the other side. The disciples didn't say, looks cloudy. looks like the wind is blowing. I don't think we should do it, Jesus. looks like we could have trouble in the sea. No, these were experienced fishermen. The sky looked great. They get in the middle of the water. There arose a great storm. Out of the blue, that word meant. Hey, have you ever been there? You're like, my goodness, I didn't see this coming. But how many glad God saw it coming? And what is he saying? Don't throw away your bold, confident speech, your courage, no matter what happens. Are you hearing me, church family? Look at uh, slide number uh, 13. Oh, we love the word. I'm going to get this out tonight. This is exciting. The New International Reader Version says this. It says, so don't throw away your bold faith. Is there a difference between bold faith and weak faith? Yes. Oh, yeah. He said, don't throw away your bold faith. Why? It brings rich rewards. <laughs> I don't know about you. I like that word rich, and I like the word rewards. I don't know which one I like better, but together, it's awesome. Rich rewards. So what does he say? Don't throw it away. Now, if some of you are here like, Pastor, man, I threw mine away. Well, go out in that field and pick it back up and start putting it back in your mouth and start saying it. 
<laughs> right? Look at that in the message Bible, my dear friend. <laughs> Is it just me? Does the devil try to get us to shut up, get you quiet, just take it? Yeah. Message Bible says it. So, so don't throw it all away now. You were sure of yourself then. It's still a sure thing. <laughs> How many know it's still, it's still sure? Whether you feel it or not, it's still a sure thing. Are you hearing me, church family? Let's just read on, Jim, verse 36. We are excited here. Oh, getting it. He goes, for you need, what, what's he telling them to do? He says, you, you guys need a little patience. That after you've done the will of God, you, you might receive the problem. In other words, listen, after you're done, you're, you're in faith, you've done all the stand, you're, you're going to receive. You just, just need some patience, guys. But, Pastor, it's not happening quick enough. It'll never happen if you just throw it away. Look at verse 37, guys. We are excited. He goes, For, for yet a little while, and he that shall come will come, and he will not tarry. Verse 38. He says, now the just, how many just people in the house Amen. shall live by what? Faith. That means you're living by the word. He says, but he notice this now. This is what God says. This isn't Pastor Michael. As a minister, sometimes when you read this, you go, this is kind of tough. Especially for those people who go, well, I don't know. The Lord never gets upset with us. <laughs> the Lord never has any no pleasure with us. You read these scriptures, you, you, it's here. He says, the just shall live by faith. Now listen, he says, he says, but if any man, woman, what? Draw back, what does the Lord say? Oh, poor baby, it's okay. No, he says he has no pleasure in him. Now we're going to look at that. <laughs> I'm losing the crowd, but this is the truth. He says, he says, if anybody draw back, if anybody draw back, this doesn't make the Lord happy. Now, we can interpret it in any way you want, but that's what it, just read it for what it is. All right? That's what it's saying there. He's not happy with that. What is he saying? He's, faith pleases him, but it doesn't please him when we get out, when we draw back, when we quit. Right? Look at the word draw back, guys. Slide number 14. He says, the word draw back means this. It means you're in faith, you're standing in faith. What's, what's starting to happen? You're starting to let it down. You're starting to let your shield of faith down. You're starting to lower it. You're starting to withdraw. Now look at these next thing. It's the opposite of that other word that I just gave you. You start to be, instead of being that bold, outspoken, faith person, when you're drawn back, you start to become a, a timid person. You start to shrink from declaring and, and unwilling to utter from fear. What does it mean to draw back? You're lowering your shield of faith. How are you lowering your shield of faith? You're becoming that timid person. You're becoming that person who's shrinking from declaring. You're not saying it in the midst of the storm, in the midst of the battle. You don't want to shrug back. You want to start going, no, this is my confidence. I'm boldly declaring the word of the Lord. You see how it all ties together? Look, go back to the scripture, my dear friend. Hallelujah. He says, now the just shall live by faith. He says, if anybody draws back, he says, the Lord says, my soul has no pleasure in them. Now, look at this. I, I did, I, I want to just read this one in the, in the message Bible. Jeremy, if you could just put the message, verse number 39 in the message. How many love? It's great. This is the message. <laughs> he goes, but we're not quitters. Who lose out? Who loses out? Quitters. Yeah. Oh, no. What are we going to do? Stay. We're going to stay with it. And, and, and do what? Survive. And survive. How? Survive. <laughs> How many no quitters in the house? Yeah. Are you hearing this? Yeah. We're not quitters. That's right. That's right. We're not going to throw in the towel. We're not going to quit. What are we going to do? We're going to stay with it. We're going to stay with it. Well, what are we going to do? We're, and we're going to survive. How many believe you're going to survive? 
Why? You're going to be trusting all the way. What do you mean by that? Go, go back to that. Don't throw away your confidence. Don't, don't start jerking back. You start to say, Father, I just thank you. You're working all things to get. Father, I just thank you, Lord God, that your word is becoming sight in my life. I thank you, Lord God. Why? Just like the house of David getting stronger and the house of Saul getting weaker, when you and I stay in faith yes. and we're declaring the word of the Lord in the spirit, yes. what's, what's happening? Yes. That problem's getting smaller and your answer is getting bigger. But if you shirk back, you quit, you get timid, what's happening? You'll never get it. You, you'll, you'll, be, you're, you'll live in the wilderness. You'll never get out. It'll be a cycle for the rest of your life. But everybody say, not me, in the name of Jesus. Stand with me to your feet. You guys are awesome tonight. God is so faithful, so faithful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's just worship. Thank you, Father. Worship. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now, some of you got reminded of things, things that God spoke to you. And you're sitting there, maybe tonight you're like, well, uh, I, I quit, Pastor. I kind of just, what you need to do is, like I said, you need to go pick up your faith, put that sword back in your hand. You know, just like in the battlefield. If you're out in the battlefield and your sword goes flying out, you're like, oh my goodness, I don't got my sword anymore. What do you do? Well, I go ahead, everybody, just stab me. Man, what do you do? You go hunting that sword. You get on the ground. I got to get my sword back. Why? You want to get that sword back in your hand as quick as possible. Now listen, some of you just dropped your sword. You quit. You need to go back there and you need to pick it up and you need to start declaring boldly. Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you for your promises. I thank you, Lord God, that even as I'm speaking, Lord God, your glory and your power is manifesting in this area of my life, Father. Father, I choose to be a person like Abraham, Abraham that's going to stick it out all the way and get everything that's promised to me. Nothing that you have declared and decreed to me, Father, will be left on the shelf. Father, I receive it and I take it all in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we bless you, Lord. And Father, right now, we just call in right now. We take souls. Father, your word says, Lord, to ask of you, and you'll give us the heathen for our inheritance. So, Father, right now, we just call from the north, the south, and the east, and the west, Lord, laborers to go into that harvest. And the part that we're to play, Father, in the harvest, Father, we, we willingly, lovingly, Yes, sir, accept, Lord Father. And we are calling in souls, Father. Children, married couples, kids, teenagers, young people, Father God, elderly, all ranges. Souls coming into the kingdom. Souls being born again. Souls being filled with the Holy Spirit, Father. Father, right now, we just take authority over every lying spirit, every demon of darkness, every spirit of confusion. Everyone that's trying to uh, hinder the harvest from coming, we stand against you in the name of Jesus. And Father, we declare the decree of the Lord, outpouring of the Holy Spirit, miracles taking place in this community. Yes, Lord, you said in the word, Father, that you made it very specific. You said, he said, there'd be a time where you would put rain on one area and then the town right next door, there'd be no rain. Lord, I don't know what's going on in the rest of this community, but our church, our people, we are declaring by your grace and your goodness that the rain and the glory and the power and the fire of God is falling on this building, on this property, in the name of Jesus. And Father, we see it, Lord God. We see it. We see the waves coming in, Father. We see the harvest coming in. Hallelujah. We see young people on fire for God. Oh, Rababasete, Ronde Lele Machai, Ronde Si Telala Mashata, Ronde Lele Meki, Ronde Lele Meki. Bless this place, Lord, bless this place. Hallelujah. 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 That's a good song. You want to sing it? Sing us out here. Hallelujah. Danita, you can help Jordana. Come on up, if you can. 
<laughs> Cassie, come on up here. Help. Let's sing this song here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.